But effectively what we're doing is we're turning a traditional energy commodity trade into a financial swap. Have you planned for this? Have you strategized? Because you're shifting kind of the industry. We built a model based on the idea of not being affected by regulation and price volatility, and that's being proven. Hi everyone and welcome to Picture Investment Online. This is Other Ships monthly pitch event where we're going to put five of our founders in front of our wonderful panel of investors. And tonight's first pitch is going to be Joe. Joe is here from TEM, a really exciting new energy business, prime solves some of the challenges of our current energy crisis. So before we see today's pitches, I am just going to hand over to our wonderful panel of investors and let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, um, I am from Lab8, uh, Managing Director of Lab8 Ventures. What we do is we work with early stage companies, help them build their products and launch the market. We do that by providing them with operational resources, capital, and whatever they need to get their product uh, into market and help them scale uh, onwards and beyond. I'm excited to meet everyone here and listen to the pitches. Hey guys, uh, great to be here. Um, yeah, as always at the Object Events. Uh, I'm part of the uh, Fuel Ventures pre-seed fund. Um, so we're at super early stage, uh, you know, anything from pre-revenue um, through or well, anything that's really SCIS eligible. Um, super diverse portfolio, I think from, you know, B2B SaaS, market-based platforms. Um, and yeah, super excited to be here. Hi everyone. Um, yeah, good to be here again. I'm a regular panelist here at the Other Ship uh, Pitch for Investment event. Uh, so good to be back. And uh, yeah, I'm founding partner of GoTenX Ventures. We are an um, investment syndicate headed out of London. We've got about 30 members in our syndicate. We're investing at, uh, mainly at pre-seed, but then we're also looking a bit at, at seed investments, uh, certainly with a UK focus. Um, and um, yeah, our portfolio to date sits at seven companies and um, always looking for more. So excited to see everyone's pictures uh, this evening. Probably don't need to tell everyone just how broken energy markets are today. Thankfully, it's done it for itself over the last six months. But very specifically, one of the root causes and biggest problems in the energy markets today are the way that energy transactions actually take place. Current market participants like businesses, homes, renewable generators are tied to an energy transaction process, which is outdated, inefficient, really hasn't changed for about 30 years. It effectively means they face super high transaction fees across multiple parties. They suffer from price volatility due to trading practices um, and the fact it's coupled to fossil fuel commodities like gas, oil, coal. And ultimately, the lack of transparency in the transaction process just enables greenwashing where no real meaningful benefit is being returned to the renewable generators and in turn the environment itself, right? So we're seeing that our potential users are simply getting worse prices than they should be and a pretty awful experience all around. I'm Joe McDonald, co-founder and CEO of TEM. Um, I've been in energy for 10 years. I built a successful energy trading company um, in the renewable space that exited to Shell in 2019. But I've become so obsessed with how to reimagine the energy transaction process to solve some of these problems. What TEM is doing is effectively enabling all businesses to take advantage of the benefits of a direct transaction where they purchase their energy from the renewable generation sources themselves. Now, we actually know that this has a lot of benefits because some of the largest companies on earth already have started doing this. So why isn't every business in the UK and further abroad doing this? And it's simply because the cost and effort of setting up these transactions is extraordinary. We're talking months and months and hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to put these in place, effectively restricting most businesses from accessing the benefits. And that's where Thames platform, our virtual utility, comes into play. Our internal marketplace has reimagined how a transaction works, evolving it from this outdated, inefficient process to a much more streamlined, direct business to renewable energy transaction process, ultimately improving price, transparency, and doing it all for even less effort than it takes for a business to get their next energy contract. Our virtual utility works based on our own technical platform, which allows for customers to super easy on board, no cost. We then do all the heavy lifting of finding the right match for the business to renewable energy transaction, completing the transaction, managing the risk, and then facilitating all the ongoing necessity 
payment facilitation, invoicing, and bill management. Now, thankfully, I'm not doing all of this myself. I have a great group of uh, co-founders and team around me, all with extensive energy and fintech backgrounds. But how do we make money in this process? Well, we take a transaction fee when any single direct transaction is completed, but now is only the single intermediary rather than multiple. And then we also charge an ongoing monthly subscription for the reconciliation and insight services that are actually necessary to provide this. The beauty of this is we end up making about five times the average margin of a traditional utility, and yet we still provide improvements to both price and the customer experience. So this market, without saying, is huge. And not only is that, it's growing every time new renewables hit the system which is significant growth forecast over the next 30 years. We were founded at the beginning of this year. We launched this month in September. In our first month of operation, we've just transacted under just under 2 million annualized GMV. We're sitting now at 10K MMR uh, from October, our first month of actual operation, which is forecast to have strong growth over the next 12 months. And we're seeing increased 20 to 30% month to month growth of our registered users, including five new channel partners that signed up in this first month of operation. We think we're well on track for the billion pound annualized revenue we can expect over the next five years. So look, ultimately our ambition is to unlock every single renewable energy commodity transaction across the globe. And we really believe that this model is truly interoperable, but ultimately it just returns billions of pounds to the end users who really deserve it, whilst also scrubbing millions of CO2 by increasing the renewable penetration that we can see on a per market basis. And finally, off the back of our successful pre-seed at the beginning of the year, we are now looking for some strategic investors to come in and top up in order to accelerate the initial growth and traction that we just started to see. So thank you very much for your time and happy to take any questions. So you're replacing this entire middle man, middle person chain. Um, how, you know, how are you delivering essentially the same you know, service that each one of these individual um, people in the, in the chain is, you know, in theory giving uh, to just entirely replace it? Yeah, super good question. And actually, this is actually, I think only the second time we've publicly pitched Tem. Um, so oh, okay, thank, awesome. thank you to thank you to Othership, but we've been relatively in stealth mode. But um, yeah, so look, it's only really become possible to do this um, at a like a, a business level, at a scalable level, thanks to I guess the last three two years of fintech developments. So you need really advanced payment facilitation. You need improved forecasting. You need uh, insurance products that can underwrite. Um, but effectively, what we're doing is we're turning a traditional energy commodity trade into a financial swap mm -hmm. and therefore porting a lot of fintech plus the energy IP that we have into the new business model to facilitate that. Of course, we're also benefiting from the kind of zeitgeist that's only sort of come up in the last year of people becoming really aware and looking for other options. Um, but yeah, we're taking on a very big piece of the market, but our approach, we believe, can be collaborative and that's been proven by working with some partners we're now funneling customers to us um rather than through the, the traditional route as well yeah okay and so, so and then i guess that kind of comes on to the next big question on the the customer acquisition model is this like driven by channel partners no so at the moment it's actually been 50 50 organic but we we've done no external marketing um or we've promoted or even launched our, our website so it's been done through customers that have either invested in us as part of our kind of like uh um customer exploration um or the channel partners that have just started i think you cannot ignore in the uk that 80 percent of businesses are owned by channel partners so if you're not going to work with them you're really going to struggle to deliver liquidity and we've seen the kind of blockchain based platforms looking to do this just fail, not just because of their technology, but also because they just couldn't get the liquidity to get set up. Equally, if we go to Poland, we have to be interoperable. If we go to Australia or Texas, each have a different fundamental way of how to acquire customers. So we have to be flexible as a business model. Otherwise, we're not going to be a global company. Yeah. And yeah, it's as if you're reading all of my notes on screen, Joe. Yeah, you know, probably the last question before I hand over to Sam. So to really hit that, you know, it seems like the UK market's big and 
uh, I'm sure you can build a really big business here. How does this go outside of that? Yeah, and where are you looking to go next? Yeah, so look, ultimately, I think it's probably why you haven't seen quite the excitement and energy, but I personally believe like what we're going through now is a 2008 like fintech revolution. We're going to see exactly the same now from energy. The problem has been interoperability with other markets. Um, now, we've taken a specific approach to not be a vertically integrated utility because that allows us to be way more portable into other markets, not just be limited to the way that we have to work in this market. The markets that suit us are markets with reasonably high penetration of renewables. Um, so we're looking at Australia at the moment, Poland, uh, Texas, New York State as well as potentially some other European countries. But yeah, we're very much focused in the UK, proof of concept. It's one of the more advanced markets as well. So it's a great test of actually, can you build a scalable product before you try and launch? Okay, awesome. No, thanks. Sir. That's, uh, that's really uh, useful. Uh, yeah, I'll hand over to... Um... Amazing. Thank you, Mike. I'm going to go over next to Sam. Hey, Joe. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, cool space. Um, I used to work for a private equity firm, actually, called John Lang Group, where we invested in renewable energy, assets like wind farms, solar power, solar plants, etc. Um, so my first question is like, where does your energy come from? Are you basically buying energy from like wind farms around the country, that kind of thing? Yeah, so the current route to market for the renewable supply of the of the effectively the internal marketplace is through third party assets. Now, fortunately, I've sold to that market before in the UK, including John Lang. So we okay. have a reasonable pipeline and we've also now we're integrating with one, uh, let's say like a compare the market for now renewables that's launched. In the future, there'll need to be multiple strategies, including potentially uh, investing and owning capital um, towards the actual renewable projects themselves. Okay. And I guess like, how is this different from other renewable suppliers like Bulb, Octopus Energy, et cetera? Yeah, so <laughs> Bulb, obviously not the great example, but they're residential um, only. And one of their biggest problems actually is they only had a one-sided portfolio and didn't manage their hedging and they were tied to a volatile market. So they were almost, they suffered from the fact that what other businesses are suffering right now. Octopus who do uh, businesses um, as well as consumers they're still a vertically integrated utility. So they're regulated, they're linked to the market. And when they get their prices to customers, they're going to the same wholesale market that every single other utility does. And there's nearly 40 of them in, in the UK. We're effectively disintermediating, disintermediating that whole space. So our pricing is actually set by the liquidity of our own internal marketplace. And we're not having to take discounts from what that mid wholesale price is. So we don't have a competitor. Um, we are working alongside one utility, um, but the future, I think, of utilities is now going to dramatically change in the same way we kind of saw with neobanks. So there is a lot more nuance in how we're different, but the main thing is we're just not a vertically integrated utility. We're, we're like a fintech payment platform almost, but for energy. So who's taking the like energy pricing risk in, in your model? So this is the this is quite the cool part. So normally a, a utility would price that up front and then try and trade around that, um, which is actually quite inefficient. What we've managed to do and taking advantage again of all the fintech developments in like marketplace platforms, we've got an insurance product that underwrites the actual daily delta imbalance um, up front for about four times cheaper than the traditional trading imbalance costs. And at the moment that takes us up to about 200 million in protection. So we've got a reasonable way to grow into it. Um, but I'm very confident that's something that's scalable and quite attractive for insurers themselves as well. Um, also, last question. Um, what do you think about like current energy pricing and how is all that craziness affecting you guys? Like, and I guess like how might that pricing fluctuation affect you guys going forwards? Yeah, so um, yeah, it feels like we're running towards the burning building when everyone's running the opposite direction, <laughs> which is quite exciting as a founder, to be honest. But um, look, ultimately we built a model based on the idea of not being affected by regulation and price volatility, and that's being proven. I kind of wish we'd launched 12 months ago because we are literally the solution to the problem. Um, we don't suffer from price volatility. We don't do forward hedges. We're not exposed to credit. Um, so more than anything, what we've seen is that the pain for businesses, which was the side we were most worried about, is so extreme that it's just easy to acquire customers. And we're also seeing channel partners who have never had a problem before about getting prices and finding the easiest routes to market. They're desperately searching around for new opportunities. So all we're able to really do is ride the zeitgeist, avoid most of the downside, 
And even with potentially volatility, we'll see with UK government rules, we kind of bypass that again by not being a, a registered um, utility and being able to just facilitate direct transactions and contracts between customers. Cool, man. All right. Thanks a lot. Yes. Uh, great stuff, Joe. Um, most of the questions were um, kind of already posed. I wanted to now talk maybe about the, the customer experience. You had a slide describing how it works. Can you just walk us through how it would work for a customer to go in um, and how it worked for them, kind of the entire process to, to uh, from A to Z? Yeah, so again, one of our, or despite trying to really entirely rebuild bottom up the way it works from like an infrastructure point of view, we wanted the behavioral change to be almost non-existent for customers. So actually it's very similar. They come to our website, they, they get to see actually all of our portal and systems as a non-registered user upfront, which again, you don't get to see with a normal utility. Once they submit their postcode and upload their site, uh, we effectively pull all of their data from open source markets, which has only really become available in the last few years. And we start automatically searching for a match, let's say like a quote. We then present a fully fixed price quote to the customer in exactly the same way they would get their new energy contract. And then they contract and complete that um, through the platform itself. And it's as simple as that. And once they've contracted, then they're utilizing the portal with their usage insights. They can validate on the business side exactly where for every half hour their energy has come from and what renewable source, as well as seeing their invoicing, billing and other insights. So it's just a very advanced kind of customer experience um, of a utility, but obviously the pricing and the setup is uniquely unlocked through the new way of transacting. So which takes me to the next question in terms of a, a business. Um, do you see that the existing players, there's a lot of lobbying and there's a lot of money that's going, a lot of people are making money through this whole transaction that you're kind of canceling out. Do you expect to get people to see some attacks basically in the future? Have you planned for this? Have you strategized because you're shifting kind of the industry? Um, have you considered that? What, what's your thoughts? I'm just curious to see how you're going to potentially handle these things. Yeah, and as I said, our model is always more about you know collaboration, not competition, at least to start with. I think ultimately within 10 years, the, nearly every traditional market player is dead. I, I fundamentally believe it. But I think in the, in the short term, there's a lot of chance to evolve. So not only could our platform be utilized by a utility themselves to massively improve their own transaction efficiency and profit, there will always be a need for a, a reasonable percentage of volume to be managed through trading markets. So when I show you our, our TAM, that's not all energy transactions. That is just say 30% of renewable transactions that could be done directly. So it's not gonna be a dramatic change and there's a lot of chance for these companies to survive and, and evolve. I think everyone's aware it's, it's gonna to have to change and especially after what's just happened, everyone across the board is aware and it'd be difficult to argue against that. So yeah, that's our model. And at the moment, that means we actually have one utility partner already that we're utilizing um, that sees huge benefit in return for the platform itself. Uh, final question on more on the financial side. Can you tell us a little bit about your valuation and use of funds? Yeah, so we're, as I said, we've got, we're looking for about 1.2 million. The use of funds is predominantly to build out our data science expertise, um, to provide a little bit of um, collateral for our insurance provision as well, as we've now started to scale larger volumes than we expected, and also to just further build out our front end um, uh, development. Um, we're covered on a back end at the moment with our founders and our first employees. We are looking to value ourselves somewhere around about 7 million, but we're super flexible. We're also looking at convertibles as well as raising around. I prefer the agile funding route if possible. We do have 18 months of runway right now. So we're not coming out to be greedy. We're coming out to try and find strategic partners now that can really help us as we move forward. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Joe, as well. Really interesting business, I think, actually referred into us by one of our regular panelists, Andrew Davidson, as well. Um, I'm about to drop you a DM down in the chat from a question from Andrew, but thank you very much, Joe. Um, please do hang around. I can see just from who's in the group today, there's a few other angel investors and a couple of people, analysts and things in there. Maybe hang around in case there's a couple of questions and drop your details down in the chat as well. And thank you so much, everybody, for watching. This has been Petra investment online via Othership. If you want to find links to our other events or some of our previous videos, you can find them in the description, along with links to Othership's workspace solutions, 
flexible working software, events, and online community. Thank you so much for joining.